Welcome to this new series of Premiere Pro Basics, CS6 and above. Now the reason that I've chosen to go CS6 and above is that there have been some quite big changes, particularly in the layout of Premiere Pro between CS6 and previous versions. This also includes the way that certain elements work and the way that we select and use footage, as well as the way we trim footage. Now a great deal of this series will be applicable to previous versions, but you must bear in mind that from CS6 there were keyboard changes, layout changes, trimming changes, and so some of what I'm going to do will not apply to previous versions. Firstly, look at the difference. This is the default layout for Premiere Pro CS6, and as you can see it's what we refer to as a media-centric. It's about the media. It's about what's in my source panel, it's about what's in my project panel, don't worry about panels at the moment if you don't know what they are, but if you're a previous user you'll see that the new version looks very different. Let me go back to CS 5.5 and you'll see that this is the same footage at roughly the same place, but you can see that the whole layout looks very different. These windows are much smaller, there's a whole bunch of controls down here which are actually missing in the other version. We've got panels open here and here and bits and pieces that look very different. The whole interface looks a lot more cluttered in comparison to the new CS6 layout. So we're going to go through the new layout, we're going to go through what's changed and what you can change because believe it or not you can make this look even less cluttered if you wish with the various options that we have in CS6. So before we go any further a quick word about footage. If you are responsible for filming your own footage that's going to be edited in Premiere Pro Here's a couple of bits and pieces worth thinking about. Firstly, make sure that your camera is rolling a good five seconds before the action starts. And also that your camera is rolling a good five seconds after the action has finished. So that you've got plenty of head footage, extra footage that you're not going to use but's there, tail footage, extra footage that you're not going to use but's there that's going to be available for sound, for background ambience, just so that you can create good edits later on. Also, make sure that your footage is well lit and make sure that you spend a lot of time thinking about the sound. Sound is greater than 50% of good video. If you were to watch a film and the video was fantastic but the sound was very poor, then you're likely to walk out. However, if you go to watch a film and the video is okay but the sound is amazing, you'll definitely sit there and watch the whole thing through. So you can see, it's worth spending time thinking about the sound because what you produce is going to make the job of the editor either very difficult or very easy. So spend time thinking about how well framed your shots are, thinking about the content of your shots, making sure that there is pre-roll, i.e. footage before when you need to start action and plenty of footage after you've finished your action and that sound is good. And if it's not good, film it again if you get the chance. Save your editor lots of problems if you can. So, in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at this interface, we're going to start looking at opening previous projects and making sure that we can understand exactly what's going on with the new CS6 interface.